This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Shanta. Shanta is an entertainer, but she also loves to be entertained, which is why she has Flow TV brought to her through Flow's 100% Fiber to the Home Network. It's great for busy Shanta because she can control the time she watches her favorite shows, play back from the start in case she missed it, or even record with cloud video recording. And with her Flow Services bundle, enjoys much more for much less. Visit any Flow retail outlet. Call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. Welcome to this Barbados Today news update for Wednesday, September 21. Thank you for joining us. I'm Desmond Brown. British visitors to Barbados are cutting back on the amount of money they spend during their vacation. And the CEO of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Susan Springer, says this is as a result of Brexit. She explained that while arrivals from Barbados's major source markets have not fallen off, there is evidence of cutbacks in spend, especially at the island's major attractions. The rate of exchange for the pound sterling is beginning to have its effects, especially on some of our attractions. Um, as the UK visitors seem to be cutting back, they're still coming. The UK visitors love their vacation. They're not going to not come on vacation, but they're cutting back on what they're doing. I've always said I've seen people at the bus stop, but I think I've seen even more people at the bus stop now. Um, and this may not be such as we move forward into the winter season, but we're certainly seeing it at the moment. New research has revealed that nearly half of the estimated $7.3 billion in revenue generated by the private non-agricultural sector comes from micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises in Barbados. The findings of the research conducted between September 2015 and 2016 by the Sir Arthur Lewis Institute for Social and Economic Studies at the Cable Campus of the University of the West Indies were released this morning by the Small Business Association of Barbados. Presenting the results during an SME Stakeholders Forum at the Acrobeat Resort in Christchurch, Chief Executive Officer of the SBA, Lynette Holder, said the MSME sector was responsible for generating about 48% of the total private sector earnings. And what the data suggests to us is non agricultural, micro, and small enterprises contributing down to 51.4% of the total private sector earnings. Um, and the non-agricultural, we see a couple of The survey also showed that 60.7% of private sector employment was created by MSMEs, or 48% of total jobs across Barbados. Earlier, when he addressed the forum, Minister Responsible for Small Business Development, Donville Innes, announced that from January next year, the sector would be able to start accessing the $50 million in grants and low-interest loans promised in the August financial statement and budgetary proposals delivered by Minister of Finance, Chris Sinclair. There are an estimated 4,000 people suffering from dementia in Barbados, and health officials say the number is expected to increase in the coming years. Acting Health Minister Patrick Todd made that disclosure this morning at a training seminar for caregivers of Alzheimer's patients. Senator Todd says there are also concerns that more young people are, are being infected by the disease. No longer is it affecting only those over 65 but persons in their 40s and 50s are also being affected. It goes without saying 
that these are persons who can still make a contribution to the economy or the economic development of our country. The government of Barbados understands the tremendous burden that dementia can place on those it touches, as well as society in general. All measures necessary must be taken to extend the quality of life of persons affected with Alzheimer's disease. This is why we have a comprehensive elderly care program which addresses policy formulation, community and home-based care, rehabilitation services, and institutional care. The workshop was held in observance of World Alzheimer's Day. Barbadians can expect an announcement soon on LTE services by all mobile carriers in the country. So says Senator Darcy Boyce, Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister, Ministry of Energy, Immigration, Te Telecommunications and Invest Barbados. LTE, which stands for Long-Term Evolution, is the fastest connection available for wireless networks. Senator Boyce, who is also President of the Caribbean Telecommunications Union, delivered the feature address during the opening ceremony of ICT Week Barbados at the Crane Resort in St. Philip on Tuesday evening. There's regional and international news after this short break. Regional news, the economic crisis in Venezuela is now so bad that doctors are using cardboard boxes instead of incubators to keep newborn babies. These photos of tiny sleeping children have caused outrage after they were posted online and have shone a light on the desperate situation in the country. Manuel Fiora, Director of Human Rights for Coalition Group, the Democratic Unity Roundtable, said they had been taken in the Domingo Guzman Alando Hospital in Barcelona. It is understood the images were taken by medical staff who wanted to remain anonymous. Experts say hospitals in the cash-trapped country, which is suffering from a shortage of food and fuel, are being starved of resources, working with just 5% of the medical equipment that they need. On the international scene, after a night of violent protests in Charlotte, North Carolina, the police chief tried to quash rumors about what happened to Keith Laman Scott. Scott, a father of seven, was killed by police in an apartment complex parking lot as officers looked for another man named in a warrant they were trying to serve. His family said Scott, an African-American, was unarmed and sitting in his car reading a book, waiting for his son to come home from school. Our officers observed a subject, Mr. Keith Lamont Scott, inside a vehicle at the apartment complex. Uh, he exited the vehicle armed with a handgun. The officers ob ob uh, observed him get back into that vehicle, at, wh at which time they approached the vehicle uh, to um, engage this subject. The officers gave loud, clear, verbal commands, which were also heard by many of the witnesses. They were instructing the subject, once he got out of the vehicle, to drop the weapon. In spite of their verbal commands, Mr. Scott, as I said, exited his vehicle armed with a handgun as the officers continued to yell at him to drop it. He stepped out, posing a threat to the officers, and Officer Brentley Vinson subsequently fired his weapon, striking the subject. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. Also, subscribe to our e-paper, email update, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV. 
I'm Desmond Brown.